Welcome to Campfire Chronicles, Episode 9. Today we've got me, Andrew Lynn, and... And you have me, Thomas. All right, and I think one of the first things we're going to talk about is this unfathomably grueling hike that Thomas <laughs> is insisting I go on. <laughs> uh, and I feel bad because I've been really ha- uh, dogging you about this. But yes, Mount Whitney is T-minus a month and a half away. Yeah, I have been so busy with school and like not even thinking about it. But you're telling me that this is the hike to Upper Yosemite Falls times three? Yes, yes. For, for one way. For one way and one day. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's a 22-mile hike. Mm-hmm. It starts at uh, El Portal, which is... Oh, sorry, no, not El Portal. Will, Whitney Portal. And the way I'm looking at it, I think you and I are going to start leaving the uh, trailhead at around 2.30 a.m. I want to try and hit the summit sometime a l- little after dawn. And then you and I are going to come down the same way we came. Hopefully sometime before 5 p.m. You think we can do it that quickly? Uh, 5 p.m. If we leave at 2.30 a.m., get back at 5 2.30 a.m. <laughs> is a little more than before dawn. <laughs> the summit before dawn. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> that would be interesting, hiking that late at night. Man, that... Or early in the morning. Mm-hmm. I, no, I... at, at 2.30, it's still <laughs> night. <laughs> I don't know. I, that's part of the reason I'm just so interested to do that because I've never done anything like this. And the cool thing is there's going to be a lot of people on the trail the same time as we are. Well, one thing I know is that I'm only going to bring a day pack. And, like, I mean, we're thinking about filming it, but... Yeah. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> only I'm only going to bring a day pack, too. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'm going to bring that Rab backpack that we, uh, that we reviewed. I'm going to bring f- both of the platypus... Uh, platypus bladders that we have and yeah. just like some snacks i think i don't think you need to bring both um, oh there's streams aren't there yeah there's plenty of streams and plenty of okay. great glacial i mean here's the thing there's still mm-hmm. going to be snow up there and that's part of the reason why uh this is going to be such an arduous hike mm-hmm. is we have to carry mountaineering gear up there oh man so what what does that involve exactly like so you got your crampons and your ice axes or yeah so we're gonna have crampons uh micro spikes which are just kind of smaller versions uh a helmet um gaiters which kind of like it's just cloth that protects your shoe and your Mm -hmm. your, the bottom of your uh pants so snow doesn't get in your sock and shoe and then most importantly of all your ice axe so we need a helmet okay so like this is not i don't know what what how intense is this in terms of mountaineering like okay okay so because you I, I, saw someone nearly die on your mountaineering yeah, class <laughs> okay so the difference between that from what i understand now i i don't have a lot of experience in mm-hmm. this so if you're coming to us for a source of wisdom don't rely on this a hundred percent um when i did my mountaineering class it was in mount baldy and there were two things going on one it was really steep mm-hmm. and uh it's pretty difficult to do and two the conditions were not the best to summit because it was it was snowy wasn't it It oh it was warm it was warm and the ice was very slippery okay so the fact that one of the reasons i wanted to start doing this hike so early in the morning is the earlier we hit the snow shoot the better because uh the snow will still be frozen and what about the way down uh the way down we just glissade so that means just get on your butt and just slide down and hope you don't go too fast. Well, <laughs> listen, if uh, this might be the end of Adventure Archives. <laughs> well, I, you know, I took, I took a class and the guys there were very good. Um, and from what I've read, it's not that difficult. I've read plenty of people doing this hike, this mountain, this, this mm-hmm. climb with no uh, mountaineering experience whatsoever. And they're still okay. able to get to the top. So, so on on a scale of hiking to mountaineering, like say it's one one is hiking, ten is mountaineering. Where is this at? Well, I would say the first part is all hiking. Uh, the first mm-hmm. four hours are probably hiking. Well, that's good because <laughs> it'll be nighttime. <laughs> um, and then I'd say for about an hour, hour and a half, it's going to be mountaineering, mm-hmm. and it's going to be like beginner, intermediate mountaineering because the the slope isn't that bad. 
and I can show you, uh, you, you can see pictures of the uh, Mount Whitney uh, mm-hmm. snowshoot. Now, we're not doing the mountaineering route, which is a lot harder. So mm-hmm. thank God for that. But once we get to the top, uh, ironically, or yeah, ironically, there won't be that much snow on the top mm-hmm. because that gets a lot of direct sunlight. So we basically just have to go through a bunch of snow to get to a spot where there's no snow. Okay. And sure, there might be some patches later on, but it's it's just basically this one part that's usually just covered by shadow, and so it doesn't melt as fast. Now, it's like, how steep exactly is it? Like, it's not like where if you stand up and rest or something or sit down, you're going to start sliding, are you? Um, if you're not positioned well, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it's 1,000 feet uh, elevation gain from trail camp up to trail crest. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I don't, I don't remember exactly what the grade was, but I definitely know it wasn't as bad as uh, Mount Baldy. Okay. There's actually some really funny videos, just people glissading down that on YouTube that you can look up. But, okay. Uh, I think we can do it. I wouldn't be, you know, I, I saw some serious stuff when I was doing my mountaineering class, and that scared me. But when I read this, I said, okay, I think we can do this. I think this is a good way to kind of ease our way into it. I mean, if people with no experience can do it, then yeah, 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 then that's me. <laughs> and, and the best thing is, if it's if if we get there and we're like, I don't think we can do this, then you know we've had a great trip already, and we'll just kind of take our mm-hmm. way down the mountain a lot slower. That's true. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. I mean, yeah, I think we're gonna be smart about it. Like, it's uh, it's not like in the Smokies when we were thinking, can we cross this raging stream? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that. Nobody else was thinking that. Yeah, that was really funny that you were the one thinking that too. Because yeah. <laughs> usually you're the voice of reason. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, so anyway, no, I'm excited for this. And one of the things I'm looking forward to is, uh, you're flying in on a Friday, and then we're gonna drive up Saturday morning. Mm-hmm. Um, usually you want at least two days to get acclimated to the altitude. So uh, we're not going to get as acclimated as you probably should. But once we get there, we're just going to go find as high of a spot as we can do and just take a nap. Mm -hmm. Uh, Hey, that sounds good to me. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, that'll. that'll Well, here's another question is how. So obviously I'm going to do lots of cardio leg exercise. But what about arms? Like how much arm involvement is there with the ice axes and such? I mean, if, if we were doing something big like trying to summit Mount Hood or even like Denali, which I don't think we'll ever touch in our lives. Mm-hmm. Um, that would be a lot more arm stuff, mm-hmm. but a, a lot of it's just legs, calves, and just maintaining your balance as you're going up. Because here, here's, com- here's the misconception about the ice axe. Mm-hmm. People hear axe and they want to say, oh, you have to swing it. But the the whole point of the ice axe is to it's just a it's just a hiking pole that mm-hmm. you you use to arrest yourself. So as you're going up, as you're climbing up, let's say you slip. Mm-hmm. With a hiking pole, you can't stop yourself when you yeah. slipped. You you just you just go down. With an ice axe, the axe part is like that's that's where this is important because you stab mm-hmm. that into the snow. You stab the mountain. And that's supposed to you from that's supposed to stop you from sliding down, and so that's where your arms come in. But at that point, your adrenaline's kicking so much that you probably uh, you, you got the wrist strap too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that it, so that is why the snow being hard is important, though. Yeah, because you want to be able to stab it, and that's where the guy fell mm. on my trip because mm-hmm. uh, if it's if it's slippery, then I mean you've walked on wet ice before there's nothing worse yeah. than that wet mm-hmm. ice there's a difference between ice and wet ice it's mm-hmm. just like wet snow and snow uh so if it's if it's nice and frozen we won't be post holing you know what post holing is uh no okay so when and you've done this before because you and i live together um when the snow is so deep mm-hmm. and it's so warm outside that when you step into the snow oh okay you're you know the snow goes up to your yeah. Your, your your knees mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you're just you trudging just break through right it. through yeah mm-hmm. yeah when it's nice and frozen you can just break through the top layer and you still have plenty of feet below you to you know that you don't slip through mm-hmm. if that makes sense yeah so the earlier we do that the less we have to worry about that and then when we're glissading down it doesn't really matter mm-hmm. as much mm-hmm. uh i could be wrong i hope a mountaineer 
out there corrects me if I am, but uh, <laughs> you the glissading down, all you need to do is, uh, and this is where the arm stuff kind of comes in. You just need to make sure you don't go fast enough. Mm-hmm. I mean, too, you don't go too fast to lose control because otherwise you're you're sliding down a giant slide at 50 miles per hour. It's like the uh, the old Bear Grylls thing where he's like, you've got to use your thighs and your buttocks. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, that's the thing. So that that's that's our big concern right now is that mm-hmm. whole shoot. Well, we need something to celebrate if we do summit it. And oh, I would absolutely. say like a shot, but that might be a bad idea if we're still hiking down. <laughs> well, I think I think if you take one shot on the mountain, yeah, yeah. You'll sober you, up. <laughs> you, the, the altitude's so high, you're going to get so drunk so fast. Oh, that's true. Oh, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, so that's out of the question. <laughs> maybe maybe I'll, I'll, a wheel I'll, of cheese or something. I'll, I'll bring the wheel of cheese. You can bring a, a, a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> the whiskey will be for when we get to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, dude, I'm excited. This is like, this is like the the mecca of hikes in the United States because it's it's such an arduous hike, mm-hmm. but it's not like too difficult. Where isn't only this a, the highest mountain in the continental U.S. or uh, contiguous U.S.? Yeah. So oh, okay. y- I think if you say continent, I could be wrong. Oh, it includes can- uh, Alaska. Alaska, yeah. So okay. obviously there are mo- a lot of mountains in Alaska that are taller. But yeah. in the lower 48, and you could even include Alaska in this, mm-hmm. this is the tall, highest point. So oh, I see. Mm-hmm. 14,560 okay. something, or I forget. But 14,000 feet, which is pretty darn high. Wow. Yeah. All right. So how are you feeling about this? I'm nervous. I, I need to start getting back into my cardio routine and stuff. I mean, I had been for a while, but I've just been so busy. and. But, uh... I don't know, like, part of me is nervous and, like, doesn't want to do it, but the other part is, like, first of all, I'd rather do something challenging outdoorsy than, mm-hmm. like, something that is stressful and not related to the outdoors. But also, it's, like, I don't know, as daunting as it seems, I always like these moments where you really challenge yourself. Um, like, I've always wanted to go back to the Smokies and do another solo backpacking trip and actually, like, do the full thing. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's something I don't think, I think we as Adventure Archives kind of lost after mm-hmm. starting this channel. Because you and I, remember, I know we've talked about this before on a podcast, but when mm-hmm. you and I went to uh, Hocking Hills and we did that huge hike, it seemed huge at the time, with yeah. no water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, this kind of segues into, you know, the next thing we're going to talk about. But we really don't do that many long hikes because mm-hmm. we spend yeah. so much time filming. You know, speaking of that, um, I don't know. I've been thinking recently that I feel like there's two ways to relate to nature, just as a quick aside. Yeah. Like, one is how we usually do it with Adventure Archives, where you're sort of just, like, in nature and a guest to nature. And the other side is where you sort of want to conquer it. And, like, I I see validity to both sides. But, like, what I mean by that is I kind of feel like there's a different mindset for people who do extreme outdoor sports or who, like, climb Everest and stuff, where they want to, like, conquer it you know mm-hmm. and there is i think there is something worth uh worthy in wanting to do that and wanting to accomplish something but at the same time i also don't think you have to climb like mountains or snowboard or whatever in order to enjoy nature so no and i, I agree and i kind of had uh, a moment uh, coming to jesus moment regarding that mm-hmm. uh i was hiking sierra polonas and i made a video about this mm-hmm. um a good quote, I, I'm probably probably paraphrasing here, but it's those who climb mountains are in love with themselves and mm. in love with oblivion. Mm-hmm. And I hated that quote when I first saw it because I was like, how dare this person say I'm in love with myself? And I thought about it. I was like, yeah, you know, why am I climbing this mountain? I'm not climbing this mountain for the mountain's benefit. Mm-hmm. I'm not climbing this mountain for anyone else's benefit but my own. Yeah, you know, I'm doing this just to say I climbed this mountain. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, and, and after that, I kind of realized it's more humbling. It doesn't matter if you, if you, if you summit a mountain or if you climb it, mm-hmm. but at the same time, you're able to look at something and be like, okay, I accomplished this. This is something that I can be proud of. Yeah. It's kind of like a balancing act. Like I think, 
I think it's good to want to do that and to push yourself to do that. But at the same time, like, it's okay if you don't. <laughs> mm-hmm. No. I don't know. Yeah. No, that's yeah. great. And I think you and I are going to see both sides of that on Saturday when we're just sitting around being lazy <laughs> bums. Totally. And then Sunday when we're – it's probably going to be the most miles we've ever hiked in a single day. Oh, man. Maybe for, like, ever. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> <laughs> wait, how many miles is it, actually? Cause... It's, 20, it's 22 miles. Okay. So 11, it's just 11 miles up. You take mm-hmm. a break, 11 miles down. So does that mean it's actually slightly less steep than, because wasn't Yosemite three miles, 3,000 feet or something? Or, I uh, yeah. Wow. Is it? I don't know. Yeah. No, you're right. So it's less steep than that? I think it's, it's three miles and we rose 3,000 feet in Yellowstone. Mm-hmm. This Yosemite. is, sorry. Yeah. Yosemite. Uh, and this one, I think, is 6,000 feet elevation gain. And, yeah, you're right. And so it's – but it's still – so it's basically just twice that with another mm-hmm. three miles. Well, that's – That you sounds know, a lot more doable. Yeah, yeah, when you put it that way at least. Yeah. <laughs> now, actually, one more question. The trails, because Yosemite – or, yeah, Yosemite, there were parts of the trail where, like, it seemed a little precarious – Mm-hmm. Like, like at least even with the uh, switchbacks, like the trail edge was right down to the next switchback, you know? Yeah. Um, what are the trails like with Whitney? Uh, they're well maintained. Mm-hmm. That doesn't really answer your question. <laughs> uh, from what I've read, there are some precarious spots. Mm-hmm. Uh, some that involve cables. Um, nothing, nothing like the half dome cables, but like cables to support yourself because mm-hmm. it is kind of dicey. And then at the top, it's a little dicey there because just just look up a picture of uh, of Mount Whitney. It's not domey like uh, Mount Hood mm-hmm. or even like Baldy. I mean, it's a sheer drop. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's very jagged. Yeah, it's jagged on top. So uh, everything should be pretty okay until we get to the trail crest. Mm-hmm. And just I know you're there, so just Google it. I'm googling it. Yeah, yeah just Google <laughs> trail crest, and you'll see kind of how precarious it is. I'm looking at it myself. Yet for our viewers back at home, hmm. type in trail crest into Google. Yeah, I see. Hmm. So. Well, you it, know, I think like, because we did Yosemite with full backpacks carrying that damn twelve pound <laughs> tripod. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have we'll have at most two cameras. Mm-hmm. Uh, our small lightweight tripods and then some mountaineering gear. Mm-hmm. Mountaineering gear is relatively light though, so. We should be fine. Yeah, because I at that point you're just basically walking with nothing almost, mm-hmm. and that's like you have so much more balance and maneuverability when that's the case. Agreed. So I mean the 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 real thing is this is a challenge. Yeah, and this is something that I want to do to you, Andrew, because mm-hmm. Adventure Archives is challenging in a different way, where it's yeah. a lot of patience setting up and stuff like this, and I want to take mm-hmm. you on. One of my hikes that's challenging in the in the way that a hike is actually strenuous. And you know, I think challenges like this do like, I think you do bring something back into everyday life. It, it humbles these sorts of you. Challenges. It yeah. humbles you. Which <laughs> I I've been talking recently about. Um, I don't know. It's just come up, but like, there's this indigenous tribe in South America. I forget what who exactly, but they have a ritual where you friggin' put your hand into a glove with bullet ant stingers, <laughs> and it's like. I just think, like, once you've done that, nothing in the forest will bother you ever again. <laughs> well, four grizzlies my way? Ah, uh, that's fine. Yeah, like, at least it's not bullet ants. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of grizzlies. Yes. Do you think we're going to see any grizzlies in less than a month? Man, you know, I hope so from a distance. Because <laughs> I got that telephoto lens, and I am ready. I hope so, too, but I want to see them from my car. And at least 100 miles away from my campsite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did we ever see grizzlies last time we were there? I did when I went with my uncle. But oh, wow. I don't think you and I did. I think we did see a bear, black, though. Yeah, maybe black bear or something. Yeah. But there are, there are plenty of them. I love how much wildlife there is at Yellowstone. Like, even just j- driving on the road. Mm-hmm. Like, you'll see an owl in a tree and then a coyote scamper across. And, and you can always tell where it is 
because mm-hmm. there's 200 people all pulled off to the side yeah. of the road. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we've got that telephoto lens. I am so excited to use it for a while. Oh, oh, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got some great uh, shots of an owl today even. Yeah, those look beautiful. If you haven't checked it out, go to our Facebook page. They're posted there. So one of the things I kind of want to see, uh, and I looked online because I typed in where we're going to be staying in Yellowstone mm-hmm. uh, into YouTube just to see if anyone had done anything like this yet. Uh, and there were f- quite a few videos about wolves, wolf oh, sightings man. near where we're going to stay. Mm-hmm. And of all the dangerous animals I had to choose to see, it would totally be a wolf. Oh, yeah. I mean, come on. They got your back, Jon Snow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I would I would love to hear a wolf mm. way out in the distance at oh, night. Oh, my God. Yeah. If someone's next to me in a tent. <laughs> <laughs> we we actually saw wolves from a distance um, last time we went. We They're did? Sort of, yeah, they were stalking uh, like buffalo calves, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, remember there was that one woman uh, who let us look through her oh, yeah. telescope? Mm-hmm. Well, I guess it was a, it was a husband and wife, elder, older, elderly husband and wife. Mm-hmm. And they were so generous about it. And... We looked through it and it was awesome. And then you had the brilliant idea, oh right, uh, to stick your point and shoot camera through the through the lens of their telescope. Yeah, yeah. And it sort of worked. <laughs> it sort of worked. We were able to record it, which was the important part. Oh right. Um, mm-hmm. And then the the wife tried to do it, and the husband was like, "What are you doing? That's not going to work." <laughs> <laughs> and we showed him. He's like, "Oh yeah." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that part of it. Oh, That's I, funny. I do. I, I just found it funny. Well, our lens is like, it's not a super zoom lens. Like some of those people pretty much had telescopes. <laughs> yeah, no, they had like, uh, like javelin missile yeah, like, launchers. <laughs> needed like two tripods just to hold. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but, yeah, it's. I'm looking forward to getting wildlife shots there. Oh uh, no, I'm excited, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, tasting some wildlife. If you know what I mean. Oh yes, yeah. We were just talking about this today, and. We might be able to go fishing in the lake. Yes. So uh, this means we're going to have to learn how to gut a fish and also <laughs> learn how to fish. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been fishing since I was a kid. It's like pretty pathetic. But <laughs> You remember when you and I went fishing at that one pond, Andrew, near, near where we lived? <laughs> With like a I, stick? <laughs> well, I, I, I got my grandfather's fishing line and I finally did oh. it. And we finally caught a fish and I pulled it out. And like you and I, like just froze. We had no clue what to do with the fish, and so. Wait, when was this? How long uh, ago was this? Oh, I think we were. I must have been like in middle school. Wow, I do not remember that. You at don't all. remember this? Remember, we would go to. It, it was that pond, and then the opposite side where mm-hmm. the drain pipe was, where the goose, where that like goose the, like almost attacked us. The park with like that forested area too. Yeah, right? yeah, with the playground and stuff. <clears throat> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So. You remember how we'd walk across, like, walk along the edge of the pond yeah, uh, near your friend's house? Yeah. And then we'd get to the other side, and there was that drain pipe. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you and I sat there, and we, we went fishing. I don't remember having an actual rod, and I don't remember catching a fish. Oh, okay. Well, we did, and we didn't know what to do. So I basically just, when we caught a fish, I held it underwater uh, with, the, with the hook in it, trying to figure out what to do. And I finally mustered up the courage to pull it out so wow. let's hope 10 years later uh i've found some <laughs> more courage <laughs> <laughs> wow that is so weird i don't remember that part of, like i remember throwing stuff in the water oh yeah but hmm. Hmm. So. yeah that would be amazing though like i've always wanted to go fishing and what's cool is you don't even need a state fishing license you just get a permit mm-hmm. um we're gonna have to like call them up or send them an email and get some exact details but so if any of our listeners have been to uh, Yellowstone before. Mm-hmm. And Specifically Grebe Lake and Cascade Lake. Yes. Uh, and know their fishing policies. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Uh, but I'm excited for that. I can't believe that's only a month away. Yeah, that is really bizarre, actually. It's, it's mm-hmm. nice that it's already like set. Like We've already got the reservation and the tickets, and it's just happening no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I cannot wait for that. Yeah, and maybe we should talk about the episode that we're going to do before that. Well, unfortunately, you won't be there. So Well, maybe. that's the thing. I want to hear about this because I know very little about mm. it. 
Yeah, so we are going to Shenandoah National Park, which is actually the first place Robbie, Brian, and I went backpacking for real. And by for real, I mean we had book bags with, like, strings to hold our <laughs> sleeping bags onto them. <laughs> um, but uh, I forget the exact trail we're doing, but we're going with Black Owl Outdoors. That's and exciting. It's going to be awesome. For those, gonna, of you, for those of you who don't know who Black Owl Outdoors are, first off, I'm surprised. <laughs> uh, because they are they are really kind of the them and uh, survival lily, both of them kind of breathed life into our channel. Yeah, yeah. They were uh, they were both some of the first people to give us shout outs, mm-hmm. which just gave us you know a significant amount of viewers. And after that, we kind of snowballed. Uh, so it's great to finally see you guys work with them. Yeah, it's. I think we're gonna get along really well. They seem super cool and. Uh, I'm <laughs> I'm planning on bringing some weird Asian foods for them to try so we can film that. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Now, one thing, we got to have, like, an orientation video for, like... <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about that. Do they know what they're getting into? Yeah, I don't know. Because um, I, I don't want them to get annoyed at how often we stop and film. <laughs> but I'm sure they have some understanding since they film, like, really high-quality videos, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess the important thing is just don't hike long distances... Mm-hmm. and uh you know just make sure that you're very patient with them yeah yeah with us you mean <laughs> oh yeah, well Th- them with us <laughs> yeah them with us yeah that's yeah. what i meant <laughs> <laughs> well yeah i think we're only doing about like three miles a day same with yellowstone actually perfect mm-hmm. compared to the 22 miles we're going to be doing in a month and a half R- right which in a day. <laughs> <laughs> which <laughs> does not bode well for filming but we're gonna try anyway <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, it's funny, too, because with Shenandoah, there's, like, a very small chunk of the trail where it goes outside of the park boundaries. So I'm thinking we might be able to use the drone there. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we got to figure out how to use that drone, but... Well, you know, it's... we, We have all these great national forests, and after the release of Wayne... Because I think this is the first video or first podcast we've done after Wayne's release, right? Oh yeah, you're right. Uh, we've actually gotten quite a bit of positive feedback, and even a little bit of feedback from uh, somebody who works at Wayne National Forest. Mm-hmm. They said that they really liked it, uh, and we're hoping uh, we we got an, you know we're hoping to somehow work with parks in the future and try and you know help them or try and offer our material for them to use as ways to draw more people to, mm-hmm. to the parks. While also teaching them to be responsible in the parks, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. Cause, mm-hmm. and national forests, uh, have more lax rules on drones than, mm-hmm. uh, national parks, which have no drones. Right. Right. So uh, I could see possibly some use in those areas. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because, uh, the national forests are like some of my favorite places to go just because I mean, you can just go there. There's hardly anybody there. And like, you don't need a permit usually, or like a, I don't know, you can go off trail usually. And it's interesting how there's a sort of balancing act with our channel where like, we'll go to Yellowstone, a big place that'll get lots of views. But then we also want to go to these smaller places and like show you that, you know, you don't have to go across the country to have a good time in the wild. But. No, and I agree. And if you want to watch shows like that, uh, I mean, there are tons of amazing shows that just go to some of the most spectacular places. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rock the Park just got added to Netflix, and I've been watching some of that. Oh, awesome! Um, now there, it's it's just it's two guys that go out to the parks, and in 22 minutes, they film an episode about the park. And you know, some of the stuff they say is really awesome. And they're huge proponents of getting people to go outside, go to national parks. And Mm -hmm. I really love it. But I really, for me, I have difficulty connecting to that because Mm -hmm. uh, it's very sensational. And (laughs) it's, uh, you know, it's got like super rock guitar in the background and, you know, super quick shots. And, oh, that's interesting. You know, it's like, it's like, it's like uh, Home and Garden TV when they try and make selling a house super interesting. Yeah. (laughs) And, you just can't and here they make something that i think is really interesting and they just like make it like really hardcore rocky and i'm like Mm -hmm. i can't get behind that that's something i love about the medium of youtube is that Mm -hmm. we can maintain control 
over like the actual product and like i don't like i mean just to keep going off with the music like the music we create is stuff that we would imagine in an adventure game or something like that Mm -hmm. and it just i think it really captures that feel that we're trying to go for and you know that's one of the problems is if you you know if a show like ours not saying it would it it Mm -hmm. is or would be but if a show like ours were to be picked up by like a network we would have to kind of adapt for what people would be saying would be better. Right. And, right. you know, usually, usually what appeals to most people is the best thing to do in terms of television. So mm-hmm. rock apply, rock appeals to more people than the type of music that we do. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's great and all, but that's not who we are. So it, uh, <laughs> well, I am glad though that like, whenever we did try to compromise or whenever we thought about compromising to attract more viewers, for example, with the winter Tinder video, uh, Robbie had us put like this dumb, uh, clickbait thumbnail. I'm actually <laughs> glad that that didn't work. Yeah. Like, I'm glad that we didn't have to do that. And I'm also glad that we've kept our episodes full length, even though I know you were saying we should cut it up, but <laughs> we would make more, we would make more money if we cut them up. Mm-hmm. But I, I, Personally, I think we should keep them longer. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I think there are certain situations, like when Robbie went to Japan, where broken yeah, up parts yeah. are better. Uh, but no, I really just like sitting there and just tuning everything out and watching it for for a good hour. And mm-hmm. the good thing is we've had a lot of viewers support our decision in that, too. Yeah, it's really, I don't know, it's just really validating to see people say that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, no, and... Uh, I also have another announcement uh, about YouTube. Uh, in a couple weeks, I'm going to be attending orientation ah. at YouTube Space LA. Excellent. So uh, that doesn't necessarily uh, ensure, promise that you know, I'll have access, access to that space. Uh, and I should probably say what the space is for our viewers who probably don't know. Uh, Google, who owns YouTube, commissioned the creation of some of these studios for uh youtube channels that have over ten thousand subscribers uh well it depends really on what which uh which youtube space you're going to but la has a youtube space and since we broke ten thousand subscribers uh i've been we've been eligible to use that space and since i'm the only one out here who lives in la uh (laughs) i have access to the space so I went through orientation, and I'll continue my orientation through until May. Uh, and what that means is I'll have like a ton of great opportunities to meet new people, take some great classes with YouTube, uh, YouTube professionals, uh, go to networking sessions, and if we were ever to actually have like a budgeted production, mm-hmm. uh, we could film a bunch of stuff there on a green screen, a white screen. Um, I have access to some awesome recording studios and some uh, editing suites as well. So I'm excited. What's like uh, one of the most exciting prospects about that space to you? Because I know you've been talking about it for a long time and I'm curious. Yeah. Well, a lot of people want the space so they can start, you know, they they can rent equipment. You know, they can rent red cameras and uh, a bunch of high end equipment that would cost tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, that doesn't really apply to me because we can't take that out of the studio and, uh, all of my shooting happens out in nature. So there are two things that apply, uh, that appeal to me. One, the editing suites, mm-hmm. because that was one thing I loved to do in college was sit there and edit with a lot of other people. Didn't really matter, uh, what we were editing. Just, like even if they're doing other stuff? Yeah. Just, you know, communal mm-hmm. editing, kind of mm-hmm. like study hall or whatever. Interesting. But the most important thing I'm uh i'm excited for is meeting other youtubers and learning about youtube because so many times you come across somebody that says oh i'm a youtuber and uh they have like one or two videos that they got Mm -hmm. that just happened to go viral Mm -hmm. which is awesome good for them but they're not constantly creating content yeah yeah so i'd love to get to meet some people who are you know, speaking of which, uh, Robbie and I recently got to or got back from a YouTube conference in Orlando called yeah. Playlist Live. You guys made a video about it. it was, um, yeah, it looks like you guys had an—I I don't want to say awesome time, 
but definitely a very educational time. <laughs> yeah, it was it was pretty interesting. Um, and I guess we haven't talked about it yet, so I don't know. Should we talk about? Yeah, that? yeah, yeah, yeah. Because as somebody who like wants to who studies YouTube, I want to hear about <laughs> it. I guess well, well, I'll just tell the story of what happened. So like the first day we get there, um, we'll back up a little bit more. How did uh-huh. you get there? <laughs> uh, we flew. Well, and how did you how did you get tickets there? We had to buy them. <laughs> Is that well, what you're getting at? No. Uh, didn't you you guys want to contest? Oh, oh, oh. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes, we Okay, so Robbie won the Find Your Park um Playlist Live contest where he won tickets to the Playlist Live event. We still had to buy our airfare. I get That's <laughs> that's why I was confused, but Okay, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> um but yeah, he he did a like 2-minute video about his time in Sequoia National Park and it was one of the five winners, which is really awesome. And they actually showed it during the weekend, even though like most of the audience was 13-year-old girls, which is the opposite of our demographic. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe we've got some 13-year-old girls ready to go out into nature. Yeah, if you are, you know, youtube.com slash adventure archives. <laughs> um, but yeah, we get there. It's like kind of a hazy day, and it feels really weird. Like, <laughs> So we get to the conference, and like we're already kind of late, and nobody can tell us where we go because like we we asked like 15 people and they each gave us a different answer and we eventually figured out what happened is that like the original place where we had to get our passes was in one room and then at a certain time they switched it to another room (laughs) (laughs) but finally we got them and um we talked to someone from patreon and that was awesome they've been super helpful and uh the next day went really well because we met fun for louie who's like a big travel vlogger if you don't know him just youtube search fun for louie and then comment on all his videos that adventure archive sent you there (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah and we met like the vaga brothers who are like these this uh traveling duo yeah they're awesome yeah it was awesome um but you know it's interesting because we met i i think one of the takeaways was like we've been doing a lot of things pretty well like i've from the start, I always wanted to make sure that we did our best to respond to every single comment on YouTube. And my whole reasoning was because, like, I don't know, I never like it when there's a big figure or something and they're just not responsive to people who want to talk to them, you know? So I've always made it my goal to, like, look, if someone's commenting, we got to make them, we got to treat them like a human being and acknowledge their comment and talk to them. And turns out that's like what you got to do as a youtube channel <laughs> according mm-hmm. to everybody who spoke at that conference and you know we we i andrew's the best at it but i try too mm-hmm. every time someone leaves a comment we we all try and make the effort to respond to as many as we can now we can't do all of them but as many as we can and mm-hmm. if anyone has any questions uh we try and answer them too yeah and if you find that one of your comments has gone unresponded just like comment on another video and we'll try to get to it <laughs> Or send us a Facebook message. Yeah, yeah. We have a hundred percent response rate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah. And then well, uh, and, well late- I want I wanted mm-hmm. to, I, I'm I'm going to interrupt you. No, I know you fine. met with somebody. Mm-hmm. Somebody uh, who was part of our channel. Who not part of our channel, but was a fan of our channel, right? Um, not at the conference, but outside the conference. Yeah, I was at an event in Columbus and. Um, basically it was just like a gathering of people and then I'm sitting there and like two people come up to me and they're like, are you Andrew? And I'm like, okay, these probably, like, they probably know me from a past event or like through mutual friends and they go like, don't you, like, are you from Adventure Archives? (laughs) And I was just like, wait, what? (laughs) And it turns out they were like from Toledo and they had watched the channel and man, I don't know. That was like such a cool experience. And it's funny because like not long before that we were doing a live event and people were asking if we ever had like a moment where we got recognized in public and we really hadn't had a actual moment like that until then but um that's awesome yeah i don't know it's it was interesting i'm still waiting for like a like a a coyote or a bear to recognize me yeah (laughs) i've seen you (laughs) (laughs) no no i thought you met with uh met with a fan in orlando you got dinner with him. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. David. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we met with David. Um, yeah, we went to Kissimmee, Florida, which is like a smaller Who'd you kiss? town. I kissed myself. <laughs> <laughs> that was stupid. I'm sorry. No, I, I would have made the joke too. 
in fact they made the joke there's like a there was some laundromat or something called like kiss me laundry or something <laughs> but anyway we got pizza with him on a saturday night or no friday night sorry and it's like this small town 20 minutes outside of orlando and the next night we went back and i drank a bit in a bar <laughs> <laughs> robbie was driving so he didn't have as much <laughs> okay. but you, you know actually going off of that it's there's something really enjoyable about like going to a random town or city Mm -hmm. and just like wandering around like it felt really bizarre because that whole area is like less a city and more a giant town or suburb but it's kind of interesting being in like this random place and like not really having any plan and going off of that we've been thinking about doing another show where i don't know if we should officially announce it, probably not. But well, this is just—you you can talk about it because it's not—it's not an announcement. Yeah, it's just—it's just ideas, basically. Yeah. But where we go to like cities with zero planning ahead of time, <laughs> and just want like figure out what we should do and explore the city, basically. I, I think that'd be awesome. I think that would be a little mm-hmm. different than the the nature part, and you could mm-hmm. kind of juxtapose it with the nature and the and, and the urban life. Now, my problem with that is, mm-hmm. for me, food is such an, like, an important staple to traveling to new places. Yeah, yeah. And if it were up to me, I would spend probably far too much money on just buying as much food as I could and like sampling everything I could get my hands on. See, I was thinking about that. And I was thinking, like, one thing we could do is just buy something small at multiple restaurants. So, first, mm-hmm. we don't get full. And second, we don't spend too much money. But... Well, there you go. Know. Yeah. See, I want to do something like that in Koreatown here in L.A. Because I've never been to Koreatown. You know, Anthony Bourdain went to Koreatown. And really? He has, a, he has an episode in Parts Unknown on Netflix about that. You I got to check, check it out. that out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, what are your thoughts, uh, you, the viewer slash listener? Yeah, to, I would, uh, to I would an, love to know. Or to an urban adventure archives thing. Because to me... If it were me, though, <laughs> like to me, I think that all aspects of life have opportunities for adventure. And while I prefer being in the outdoors, I really just want to film a beautiful show like in the city and stuff. But I'm so curious what our viewers would think. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. if you think the idea sucks, that's fine. Yeah. Feel uh, free to say that. And don't worry, like Adventure Archives is not going anywhere. No, like, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> don't worry. I know the internet is pretty pretty kind on people with their ideas so uh and then you know i i know we should probably wrap things up but let's let's talk about one more thing kind of Mm -hmm. youtube related so uh i actually asked a question a few weeks ago and asked people on our facebook page if they had any hiking plans for that weekend and i was kind of surprised we got quite a few responses yeah, um, the first one is Greg Cribb, who, by the way, is a $50 patron. So thank wow. you so much, Greg. Seriously, thank you. You are awesome. And it's sweet to know your last name now. <laughs> 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 um, but he sent a picture of a view from Sedona, Arizona. He's backpacking Secret Mountain. And he says, it's not Yosemite, but it's close. And man, That's if, f- yeah, if, you're, if you're listening on YouTube, then you're seeing quite a beautiful instagram picture Mm -hmm. of what he saw that day yeah this is absolutely beautiful i just love how the i love the colors now i'm sure there might be a little filter on it but regardless yeah like the reds and the blues and mm -hmm. and look at that plateau out there i always i love Mm. the idea of plateaus it's like a mountain with its top cut off yeah and i love the clouds too like i I don't know i love when you actually see the clouds in a picture But I think that's because for all of season one, the sky was washed out. <laughs> uh, but Greg, right. thank you for sending that in. Seriously. We we got to go to Arizona. We've been talking about going to Arizona for we quite have, a while. And yeah. we, we want to. It's just airfare is expensive. Yep. Yep. One uh, day. One day. Yes. Another one we have. You want to do this one, Andrew? Uh, and then Tina Marie said she hiked the AT in Hamburg, Pennsylvania, which, you know, actually, I really want to go do something in Pennsylvania sometime. That's actually where Black Owl Outdoors is from, so... It'd be cool to go there. And I think another fan said they were from there and wanted to meet up. But anyway, she hiked the AT, and uh, apparently it's the rockiest of all trails in Pennsylvania. 
or the, it's the rockiest section of the AT, rather. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Look at those dogs. Those dogs are epic. Yeah, it would be <laughs> awesome. I love that <laughs> blonde dog in the front. <laughs> Just like Just goofy. Derping around. Uh, Man. Can you imagine awesome. being a dog and like going on the AT and how amazing that would be? That'd be incredible. Yeah. It, you know, I've been looking at dogs, but I'm not quite ready to get one yet. Yeah. So, Tina, I'm looking at you, and I'm not sure if that's your husband or brother or friend, but you guys look very happy, and it's awesome that you're out on the trail. Yes, thank you for your submission. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Uh, looking f- down here, um, someone by the name of Fat Times Podcast. <laughs> so I don't think that's an actual name. Oh, Josh and Paul. That's their oh. names. Uh, he commented, in your backyard at Fort Harrison State Park in Indianapolis, uh, we braved the 30-degree weather and turned and it turned out beautiful. Hiked five miles. Saw lots of budding plants and a very gnarly-looking ra- raccoon. And then he posted <laughs> a uh, uh, collage of three pictures. Fort Harrison State Park. Oh, look at that. Look at that water. Man. See, I- that, uh, that's so nostalgic for me because I just don't have that here in LA, and that looks so quintessentially Midwest. Yeah, like that lake right next to the forest. It reminds me of uh, our trip to Hoosier, yeah. which ironically is also Indiana. But mm-hmm. and I guess this must be Josh and Paul on the left, giving us the thumbs up. I actually, you know, I was in the woods recently and I saw a gnarly raccoon. Well, actually, it was just the lower half of it <laughs> sticking out of a tree, <laughs> and then it crawled inside. <laughs> Uh, and I saw a, uh, a rat scurry across the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to, to be fair, usually when I see raccoons, they're they're jumping into the sewer system. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Josh and Paul. And thanks for giving us the thumbs up. And uh, if you're heading out anytime, send us more pictures. I'm curious. Uh, I'm going to give them a little plug here. I don't know much about it, but apparently they have a podcast called Fat Times. And yeah. they're going hiking. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty awesome. So... Check out Fat Times if you're mm-hmm. if you're looking for something. Uh, I don't have a picture here, but one of our one of our one of our guys, Miguel Salinas, uh, says, "Not this weekend, but two weeks ago, I took both of my sisters and their uh, yeah both of my sisters and their first hike ever. We went to Mount Magazine in Arkansas. Uh, we oh, did the highest point in in Arkansas and looks and look at a." Uh, Wow, I cannot read today. <laughs> we did the highest point in Arkansas and looked uh, at the beautiful scenery. Got to say, uh, we got them hooked. That's awesome. Go Google image that really quick because that looks pretty beautiful. It's like very Mount forested. Magazine? Yeah, like it's a lot of rocky cliffs and like forest. and. Well, I, I have to say there's this guy and I love, I love PBS. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and if you have an apple oh, tv yeah. there's a pbs there's a pbs app and one of my favorite videos and i'll you just watch it and you'll you'll be able to tell why it's my favorite video uh this guy he has this pbs show called exploring arkansas and i just love everything about him he's always he's always got this big grin on him he's always excited to do something new and he's just such a goofy guy and i love him <laughs> i love him um and he always goes to uh the ozarks which is in arkansas wow man i need to go to the ozarks look at that uh i just typed in mount magazine and google images look at that second image yeah yeah i gotta save this for the podcast um but look at i would love just to spend a night i assume that's that a hotel. hotel yeah yeah that'd be amazing wow i bet there's good climbing actually the fifth picture is someone climbing so there you go that's beautiful it's funny like certain states like montana and wyoming you think and you you immediately imagine what the wilderness looks like but then like arkansas i don't really know what it looks like you know off the top of my head and actually texas i was watching a video by the state parkers recently um where they were in texas and it's funny how green it is like you think texas and you think like deserts and stuff but i mean it's such a huge state so obviously there's variety but Mm -hmm. It's funny how much greenery there is. Seriously. Uh, and not necessarily part of that comment, but we have had some posts to our Facebook page from people who've gone out hiking. Frank Daly, or Dolly, uh, says, love your guys' show. Thank you very much. By the way, he is also a $50 patron, and he is awesome. He uh, attended our last, like, one of our live sessions. Oh, right. He from did, his you know. truck. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was awesome. 
That is awesome. So he's, uh, this is Harley and it's a picture of his dog. Uh, and our truck outside Vermillion Cliffs. Keep up the great work. Well, thank you. And look at that picture. I don't know if you can see it right now. Here, I'll send you a copy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it is, it's quite desert. It reminds me a lot of uh, Death Valley. Oh, man. that That's like an environment I would love to explore someday. I would love Especially to ex- at night. <laughs> I would love to explore it. I wouldn't love to hike it. I'll be you know, honest. Yeah, same. That's true. <laughs> Those cliffs, though, um, during the Find Your Park expedition that I went on in October, like through Colorado, mm-hmm. we were driving through New Mexico, and like all the cliffs looked like that, like all these bright red and purple colors. And it was like some of the most incredible scenery I'd seen. And it was just for miles, like just stretches of this deserty cliff area. It was awesome. Well, you know, I didn't realize this, but Frank Daly sent us another uh picture of his dog i I gotta say i love this dog Um, (laughs) it looks very regal like just sitting on that rock yeah is that a border collie i'm not sure i don't know i'm not the one to ask (laughs) okay but he's at echo reservoir and oh god i just love the love the clouds you were saying and in the distance you could see some snow-capped mountains Mm -hmm. i I gotta look up echo canyon now echo reservoir i mean uh, that's just beautiful where was this at like which state I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, ch- 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 Is it Utah? Utah? Yeah, think? it's Utah. It's upper Utah. It's south of, actually just south of Wyoming. Utah has so many beautiful places. Like, just the whole Southwest. We got to do an episode in the Southwest. Yes. Yes. Actually, um, oh, actually it was David who we met in, or, uh, in Orlando. He's been telling us to go to Zion National Park. And he's actually going there sometime this summer with some friends. But man, that would be awesome. Absolutely. Uh, so I think that's basically all the all the pictures that people have sent us from their hikes. Mm-hmm. If you uh, if you've been on some hikes, send them to us, and we'll we we hope to get them in a podcast sometime. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, we love them. We love. I I could just look at pictures all day. Yeah, and feel and, free to leave any questions and stuff too. Absolutely. Well, uh, Andrew, we're coming up on an hour podcast this is a pretty long one so <laughs> any parting words uh well thank you for listening and thank you so much for all of your support if you want to support our channel go to patreon.com slash adventure and sign up to become a patron and i know we plug that a lot and it's probably annoying to some people but it's really really helping us like genuinely helping us make this channel something bigger mm-hmm. and we're already able like we've already got three dates planned for filming in the next three months so that's an episode per month which is much better than one episode every three months <laughs> and we'll be honest we we would not be doing yellowstone right now if it weren't for the patrons yeah it just yeah. It wouldn't be possible <laughs> no no and you know it's so much of this you know we're we're, we're able to we're able to do we're, on, we're able to do only so much at a point uh, and mm-hmm. I'm I'm the one sitting here in California coming out with a video <laughs> not that not as often as you guys are but yeah this is just one it's a great it, it's such a morale boost and two it's such a great way to uh kind of give people back uh mm-hmm. and uh we we don't really know much about this aspect but we're th- we we do have a little little gift we're not quite ready to announce oh right mm-hmm. but uh let's just say it's pretty awesome and uh we hope that some people want them. Yeah, you're going to want to look out for that on our patron page mm-hmm. sometime uh, before we film our next episode. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and speaking of which, if you are a patron right now, please get back to us about which uh, music albums you want. And if you're in the higher levels, tell us what you want us to say or shout out in the episode. Mm-hmm. We really want to get your rewards because um, we are like... I I can't describe in words how thankful we are to you. Like seriously like yeah it's just amazing so and you know yeah 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 (laughs) (laughs) all right well thanks so much guys for listening uh this is episode nine Mm -hmm. uh we try and come out with a new podcast every monday uh every other week and hopefully sometime soon you'll be hearing brian and robbie again yep all right well let's uh put the fire out (laughs) 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 all right Uh, see you next time adios